Hi, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make a simple interactive activity using PowerPoint. In this activity we're going to present questions to students with potential answers to select from. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, change this layout to blank. I'm going to layout and then blank. And then I need three slides to complete um, this activity. I only have one. So I'm going to go over here to insert and then click new slide, new slide. A control M as in Mary would do that as well. Now that I'm going to make each of these slides a different color so that I can more easily identify what each slide is for later. So I'm going to come over here and right click and one of my choices is format background. So I have the formatting window here. We're going to do a solid fill. And choose a color and I want to choose a light color so our text is easy to read. And I'm going to go through and do the same steps for each other slide we just created. Okay. Now on the pink slide, this is going to be our question and answer slide. I'm going, we're still on the insert menu. That's good because I'm going to insert a text box and just add a question. Think about a question in your content area that you might want to ask students. And you can embed this question activity in a PowerPoint that presents content to students. So you could have some content that you have presented. And then you could have a question embedded in the content. So I might have had some content slides with facts about Oklahoma. And then we transition to this question and answer slide. And it makes students think back to what they've just heard from you and it gets them listening listening a little more closely especially when they know you're going to um, have a questioning activity to check their listening um, comprehension all right so i use the font menu to change the text to a much larger font because by default it's 18 point and that's much too small now while this text box is still selected, and I can tell it's selected because it has the box around it, I'm going to um, hit Control C for copy on my keyboard. Control C, that makes a copy. And to paste this, um, I'm going to deselect that box just by clicking outside of it. And now I'm going to hit Control V, that's V as in Valentine, for paste. So now I can just edit this to create some answers. I'll offer some uh, correct and an incorrect answer. And you can have more than one answer, or more than two answers. Just for time's sake, we're going to do one correct and one incorrect. I'm using these little white tabs here to change the length of my text box. There we go. All right, so I have my question and a couple of answers. Now the blue and green slides are my feedback slides. So green will say, um, good job. So I'll go ahead and paste a box here. Remember, I made a copy of this text box earlier, and I'm just continuing to paste it every time I need um, to add text. It's just a few less steps than going to insert text box and then changing the font size and just saves you time. Any little thing you can do to save time is good. So here is my, my blue slide in the middle. This is my so sorry, got the wrong answer slide. I'm going to hit control V. And I'm going to change the text to try again. All 
All right, so now to add the hyperlinks. Let's start with our um, question and answers. I need a hyperlink each answer to the slide that gives the appropriate feedback. So I highlighted the text for Austin. I'm going to right click. And the, in this menu that pops up, I'm going to select link. And right now it's on existing file or web page. I need to select a place in this document because I'm selecting a slide in this document. So here's our slides we've created so far. So Austin is not the correct answer. So I need to link it to slide two. Try again. Oklahoma City is the correct answer. So I'm going to highlight that. Link two. Good job. All right. I'm going to go here to try again. And I am going to link try again back to the question slide. Because if they get the incorrect choice, I'd like them to have another chance to get the correct answer. And I don't need to hyperlink good job because after this slide, uh, we're done with that question. They've gotten it correct and we can just proceed with the lesson or to another question. Now, if you'll notice when we change the text to hyperlinks, it changed the color to light blue. This could be a problem on some of these slides because um, the readability might not be the best for everybody. It's not enough of a good color contrast, but we can fix that. To fix that, you go over here to the design tab. This may look different depending on which version of PowerPoint you have. This is PowerPoint 16. Um, I think in older versions of PowerPoint, you would get into this design menu, and I think you would have a link over here that says edit um, temp design template. Um, in this version, it's kind of a backdoor way to go, but if we click on this little button here, this arrow down button, one of the choices is colors, and what it does is it lets you edit the um, default colors. So I'm going to come down here to customize colors at the end of this menu. And here it shows you, you know, by default what they make the um, text colors, depending on what kind of text you're looking at. So this is a hyperlink. This is what we're concerned about. We're concerned that by default hyperlink is light blue. So we can go in here and change it to black. Once students follow the link, it changes to, it looks like, a plum color. Um, it's not too bad, but I'm going to go ahead and change this to black too for this activity. Now, if you're creating an activity like a Jeopardy game in which you have many links on a slide to different questions, and so you have students going back to that Jeopardy slide to link to other questions, and they need to know which questions have been answered and which have not, the followed hyperlink color will be important to you and you will want to allow it to change to a different color. So keep that default setting there. But definitely for hyperlink, you'll want to set the default to black so it's readable. So now from now on, when you see hyperlinks in um, this PowerPoint, they will automatically be black because we just changed that template. So if you want to create quickly create a, um, another set of questions and answers. Um, you don't have to go through all the steps I just showed you. What you can do is you can select, and it's already selected, this question and answer slide. Hold down your shift key, and then go all the way down here to your good job slide. That way all three slides we created are selected. We can tell because they have the red border around them. Now I'm going to right click and go to duplicate slide and it'll duplicate all of them. So if I want to create another question, maybe another states and capitals question, I can. So 
So what I'm going to do is I right-clicked Austin. I'm going to go to Edit Hyperlink. Right now the text to display is Austin. I can change that to Topeka. Right now it's linked here to try again, but it's part of my new question. So I'm going to connect it to link it to the good job slide because it's the correct answer. So it changed my text and the destination of the link. And now I'm going to right click Oklahoma City and go to edit link. And I can keep Oklahoma City there as a possible answer, but I think it would be better for this activity if we gave students another, maybe another capital name to choose from. And put in Raleigh and I'll need to, right now it's linked to good job. I'm gonna need to move it down here because I'm working with these three slides for this question. So that will be my try again answer. I'm going to go over here to try again and right click and go to edit link. It's still linked to slide one, so I'll need to come down here and change that to the next question slide. And I can see the text of the question I just edited, so I know it's the correct slide. So there, in just a couple minutes, I created another set of questions. So I can keep duplicating these slides, just as I showed you, and create additional questions. So that is how you create a very simple interactive question and answer activity using PowerPoint.